What's going on guys? Um, I've been seeing a bunch of posts about uh, how to set up your electronics on the TRX4 and I kind of want to just explain the best way what a BEC does and what's the best thing for your servos um, and go from there. Uh, in this truck I'm still running all the stock servos, steering servo, shifter servos, and the locker servos I'm still they're still all the same they're all stock the only thing I've changed is I'm running a different controller I am running an external BEC and I'm running a Tekken RS with the uh, Castle 2280 motor I just put the 2280 motor in it previously I used to run uh, a two pole uh, 21.5 motor which was just a little bit faster than the stock motor that was in it and it gave me lots of torque and everything else the only reason I went to I switched to this motor is because I had it laying around. I decided I didn't want to use this motor in another project because that project is actually more of a shelf queen. So I wanted more torque. So I decided I'm going to take the 21.5 that I had in this and put it in that truck. So I had this 2280 from the ESC combo that I bought for that truck. So um, let's start from the box and then I'll work forward. Uh, as you can see in the box, this is my lipo. It's just a 4200 uh, shorty pack. They were I uh, run these packs just because it's nice and small. Um, I could have ran it in the cab, but I think down the road I'm gonna put an interior in this. Who knows? Um, and the main reason why is because this is a hard body. It's fixated to the chassis. It's really hard to get it off if you need to change a battery. I I do have the stock tunnel cover for this truck, so it's just off right now. But if I'm in the trails, I can just pop the tunnel cover open, pull the battery out, and switch it, no problem. Uh, this here is my LiPo meter. This tells me my voltage of my LiPo uh, when I'm in the trails and that. Uh, just because when you run an external BEC, you never know when your actual battery is actually dead. Um, your servos still work, it's just your truck won't run properly, it will just act all funny. This will let me know 100%, and this way I don't kill my LiPo. Um, when that happens I actually have a three position switch right here this is my on off switch for the truck I have it wired to my BEC and to the speed controller now the reason why when you're running an external BEC with a lot of different um, ESC's especially with the ESC's that have on and off switches the ESC switch has to be on too with the external BEC powered to actually work properly you can't leave the ESC power switch off that's actually a no-no. You can actually damage the ESC that way. So uh, this way I actually have what you call, uh, I call it service mode for myself, especially when I'm working on the truck. And then I have run mode. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pop the body off and then I'll explain that all. So the cab's actually put on with magnets. If you guys haven't seen my other videos. So as you can see, this is my truck. There's my Tekken RS and the 2280 motor does have a sensor, a sensor wire hooked up to it. It's just a little short uh, 50 millimeter sensor wire. As you can see, stock servos. And yes, I am running the stock steering servo. The only thing is this here is um, a metal servo arm. So I don't have a plastic one. Oh, actually, no, this one still has a plastic one. I haven't ordered a metal one for it yet. The, this one has the metal one. I forgot. So, we'll continue on. These stocks, uh, Traxxas servos, uh, without, without true 6 volts and 5 amps to them, they burn out. That's why you guys have experienced a lot of burnouts with these servos. But they are great servos as long as you run good, proper, clean voltage to them. Now the stock XL5 ESC only has, uh, it only has, a, it, it is 6 volts, but it only, uh, when it's at run mode, it's like 5.5 volts, and it's only a 2 amp draw. So that's why these start to fail. These need a true 6 volts to these servos, so that's why, since day one, I've been running an external BEC. Now, yes, all my stuff is waterproofed, and I will explain how I waterproofed it all too. Um, I am running a different controller. I am running a Fly Sky 10 channel controller now. 
Uh, the reason why is because I wanted the multi uh, independence controls of my diffs and everything else and because of my, all of my other accessories. So, I recommend running an external BEC if you're running the stock XL5 and stock servos and everything. Now, the reason why, again, like I said, I explained with the amperage on the actual XL5. Now, a lot of people are worried about, yeah, you know, okay, I'll put an external BEC in it, but then, you know, once you plug my battery, it turns on. Well, there is a way around that, and like I said, you can actually put a switch on it. So what you do is you just put a power switch in between the positive line. So you run the positive line from the BEC to the switch, and then to the switch to your power source. That's how you do it. Then you have an on-off switch. Now, mine's a little bit different just because... As you can see, I'm a little bit more tech savvy and I like to do things a little differently. But um, because I have a Tekken RS, the power source has to be turned on too. So because I wanted to turn it on and off, I actually had to use a special switch. This switch is not a regular three pin switch. It's actually a six pin switch. I don't know if you can actually see it. It's right there. So instead of having three pins, one in the center, two on the ends, it has six. So two in the center, two on each end. But it's actually separated. So it's actually two switches in one. So that means this one side is con is wired in for the ESC, and then one side is wor wired in for the BEC. But I have it wired up so when I flick it, uh, let's say towards the wall of the box, only my servos will work, not the ESC. The ESC will flash. But you didn't hear a beep or anything. If you guys know what a Tekken RS will sound like, it beeps when you turn it on. As you can see, it just flashes. So, here's my controller. Uh, steering works. As you can see, my lockers work. My two-speed. All of it works. Except for, I have no throttle. No brakes, no throttle, no nothing. This is what I call service mode. I like this because if I'm working on the truck and I need to check out my servos or anything, the truck won't take off on me if I hit the throttle by accident. Now, if I put it back in the center, it turns it off. But when I pull it towards the back, you can hear the ESC turn on and everything works. So as you can see, steering works, all the lockers work, two speed works, but I have throttle. Now, there's my lipo meter saying the battery is fully charged. And there you go. Now, the other part I'll explain is the waterproofing. Now, waterproofing is actually really, really easy. It's not that hard at all, to be honest with you. Um, as you can see with this external BEC, this is the actual Castle BEC that has that blue shrink wrap around it. Now, all I've done is taking the blue shrink wrap off it, and then I used like shoe goo or this stuff, goop too, and I coated it all over the whole thing. So in between the two boards and everything, I just gooped it on it. And I just cover it up and I just I don't put a heavy coat on it. I just put a light coat So as long as you cover like the circuit boards and everything else you're good now as you can see here It's shinier than the other because the nice thing is this goop you can actually peel it back off the circuit board That's what I did was I actually peeled it back and I peeled this back because I shortened this servo lead That's the reason why and then I just regooped it. So now it's all sealed again uh, the ESC it's a little bit it's a little bit harder with ESCs. Like this one here is a little bit more technical to get into. I actually use a syringe and stuff called Corrosion X, brush that in, and then I use a syringe and uh, a, a certain mixture to actually make this stuff runnier. And I would syringe it into the circuit board inside the coating and everything of this. And then I would uh, Coat it all and then I'd put the case back on but I'd make sure all the buttons would function. It's a little bit technical more technical than to do it to this than uh, than doing something like this um, Same with this here the receiver um, I used uh, I used goop on the bottom of it and on the top 
just to co cover the circuit board. And then on all my connections, all my connections, even in, in the receiver, like the receiver connections, all these connections in here in the receiver, all the receiver plug connections, the sensor wire plug connections, these plug connections so I can actually pull the box. That's why I have these here. So the box can be disconnected because the box is actually um, mounted to the chassis. Um, I use this stuff, dielectric grease. I put dielectric grease on that and this will prevent corrosion and everything else because I do run this truck in the in the water and everything else. I haven't ran it in this conversion, but when I had the uh, Defender, when I had it set up as a Defender still, um, it used to go through the streams and everything all the time. Like I'd, I'd submarine the truck. Um, I'll still be doing it to this truck. I'll still be submarining and everything else. So it's going to get the same beating as it was before. It's just that it's hard body because as you can tell, pretty much all my trucks are hard bodied. And uh, that Defender body is not actually mine. That's actually a uh, customer's. So that TRX4 there is actually getting a hard body too. I have three TX4s and they all have hard bodies. So um, I hope this explains it a little bit better for you guys about the electronics. Um, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, like I only run this, I run this BEC at six volts. So you got to make sure you program it at six volts because all the electronics can only take up to six volts. Um, I don't see the point of running 7.4 volt servos and all that kind of crap. To be honest with you, all my trucks run six volt servos because you can buy six servos that run six volts. Um, and they're nice and strong. Like this one here has a high tech servo in it. It's a titanium geared one. It has 400 ounces at six volts. And I don't need anything more than that. And this is a shelf queen. So that truck there has a pro tech, uh, T, uh, 100 T that's been waterproofed. That's 200 ounces at six volts. And that's my competition rig. And that rig has, that servo has never failed me uh, in any comp or anything. And that thing has gone through hell and back. And this truck here is seven years old. The only reason it's looking like that is because I finally decided to redo the body on it. So that's why it's sitting like that. But that truck has done me well. And that servo has been in that truck since day one. Um, you know, you'll hear all these guys running these overkill servos and everything else. But... Honestly, you run these auto overkill servos and you're killing your runtime. You know, the more voltage you put out, the more amperage it needs and everything to run, and the less runtime. Like, I have guys that are running 6,000 milliamp batteries in their trail rigs and everything else, and I can outrun them. Uh, I can run my trail, I can run a trail run longer than them, and uh, it's just because, you know, I have my electronics set up properly and everything. Now, another thing. Uh, that is a big must um, is endpoint adjustments you know if you can adjust the endpoint adjustments of your servos for the amount of like the, the minimum amount of throw that it needs it'll make your servos last a lot longer now you Traxxas guys can do the same thing there is an endpoint adjustment in your controllers um, it's a little bit harder to uh, go through the settings and everything but there is a setting Menu you can do by blink and then you can do the adjustments that way or if you get the Bluetooth module for your controller then you can just do it right off your iPhone or Android phone and it's actually way easier that way so it is a worth of it is worth the worth the adjust uh sorry it is worth the investment for the Bluetooth module because you have way more adjustability and everything else you can change everything else on your controller but if you're like me um, I'm a stick radio guy when it comes to my trail trucks and everything. Uh, that's why I run one of these. This is an uh, FlySky i6 controller that was a six channel, but it's been reprogrammed now for 10 channels. So all these switches and everything else is an independent channel. And then these have been locked out. So this is just my throttle and that's just my steering. So um, nice and handy. Super cheap, 
you know, you can get these controllers with a 10 channel receiver for, you know, 70 bucks. So, uh, it's a must. And if you guys have never used a stick radio before, honestly, don't hate on it until you try it in the trails because I have a lot of guys that run the trails with me and I let them try it out and they say it's a night and day difference. It's more precision. You get more precision out of it, especially in the trails than a pistol grip radio. So, um, Honestly, don't hate it until you try it, right? So, but uh, I hope this explains a lot of the electronic sides and what's the benefits with the external BEC and how you can waterproof in that. Um, if you guys want more, I can probably do another how-to video on the waterproofing for you guys. All right, later.